Hi guys, this is uh, a, I guess this is a series wrap up of Somewhere Boy, which of course I did a review of episodes one and two. Um, Nadia was in the room both when I started watching it and when I did the review. And I've noticed your head has slowly turned towards this drama, which is on Channel 4, that stars Lewis Gribbin in the main role as Danny, but has a sensational cast around him about this boy who curiously has been sort of held in isolation by his father for 18 years of his life and sort of comes out of the world. His um, entire life. His entire life, yeah. yeah. I mean, and really, everything about this is everything you potentially loathe about something. That's why you didn't want to watch it. To well, when it. you first... In fact, I think we might have said about it on Coffee Moaning. You read it, and I went, "Oh no, no, I'm not going to be able to watch that." Yes. It's, it's it, uh, because the world is just so sad and febrile and mm. scary. I thought I don't really want to watch a program about essentially abuse, like mm. horrendous abuse. But oh, it's way, way, way cleverer than that. Mm. And when Mark started watching the first episode, he said, "Oh, you're right. If I put it on, yeah, yeah, I've got stuff to do on my phone." And then I kept yeah. looking yeah. and looking. And, my God, in the end, we're completely obsessed with this utterly, brilliantly written... Mm. Well, I mean, I, I literally cannot fault it in any way. Can you? No, there are about, I think there are, is it eight episodes or ten episodes? And, and there are varying lengths. And it's really the evolution of this boy, Danny, played by sensationally by mm. Lewis Gribbin. Um, but also how he get gets taken in by his dead father's family. Uh, his his aunt is played brilliantly by Lisa McGrillis. Lisa McGrillis. Just I mean, oh my God, that. all yeah. the way through the yeah. series I was saying to you, wasn't I? She is so layered. Mm. She'd done so much work as an actress on her character and on her history you could feel the history of her mm. feelings and thought you knew what she'd gone through without with her, the words being there with her brother, with her brother and with her yeah. feelings as an aunt and mm. I think she was totally extraordinary she blew me away yeah absolutely yeah. Blew, blew and, me away and I thought what was what was really clever about the show is because it's from the producers of the end of the effing world which we loved which we loved but was much more tilted towards surreal, surreal. humour mm. Um, this kept what I thought was so it's clever very with this kitchen sink. Yeah, well, it was kitchen sink. Drama. It kept teasing. It kept nudging us towards the the natural or inherent oddness, if you like, of many social situations. I thought there were great moments at the funeral wake and scenes in houses where people are sitting around adults and children. I, I love the way it didn't shy away from the awkwardness in many many relationships, especially the awkwardness be between boys. I mean, we have to talk about Samuel Bottomley, who plays essentially. Uh, I'm you know, obsessed his, with his Danny's uh, what obsessed. was it cousin. Yeah, and he plays a boy trapped in the toxic masculinity trap, isn't he? He's watching porn, he's on his own, he's upstairs. You hate him at you the hate beginning, him at the you absolutely hate him. What a vile, horrible mm. boy. And and that's actually what made a lot of my tears through this series was for him and for the, you know, the world out there of mm. these sorts of young boys that are just woefully misunderstood, who are desperately trying to put on a front for the world in a world that is so difficult for young people mm. you know I will not tolerate a single person saying to me they know nothing young people of what is tough it is the toughest time to be alive as a young person I truly believe that yeah. what they are being fed through their phones through society through everything and he played that well he didn't play it. he told us the truth of that but his desire so his desire in his eyes to reach beyond the limits of what he was being offered as a young man oh. and I think that's what's so clever about his I don't his... even know how he did it no I don't know I don't know, know how, he, how he told us the story in the way he told us no the story. exactly because it makes you it made you it would make you empathise with every single conceivable young male really who's does. trapped makes me, will make me think yeah who's he, trapped Sam in Samuel Bottomley yeah. and I'm so I'm so grateful to you Samuel that we watch this with our youngest who's 15 year old girl and also in the trap of toxic masculinity and all of that mm. um, and we had such great conversations out of it and you gave us a level of understanding mm. and you've reminded us that to pause and think before we make judgments about the way people behave exactly. compared to what might be going on inside exactly. and you gave us that so beautifully and also another reminder with that I thought your his relationship uh, Samuel Bottomley's relationship with his stepfather played by Johan Myers Johan Myers I've never seen before never seen before oh my god Johan you yeah. played this yeah. you the told us the truth Oh. But that, that awful difficulty between stepping forward months. enough but stepping back enough, being mm. insulted and, and obviously the young boy, and the so young boy holding your arm's length, being really aggressive, really nasty to you, but you actually having to sort of be steady and constant. And, kindness. And, and the kindness you of that scene. You played kindness yeah. so beautifully. Yeah. And the scene with you... In him, the garage. It makes me cry just thinking of it. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, at the moment. I did cry yesterday when I watched that because it was just like... <sighs> hmm. It was it's like, you know, they are walking amongst us. You know, people's pain mm. is 
can seem so small and yet it runs so deep and mm. we just dismiss each other all the time. And I thought that was one of the most beautiful moments. Where he rested his head. We were like this. Oh, we were oh all, my God. It was electric. Is he going to rest his head on his shoulders, yeah. weren't we? We were, we were on the edge of our seats. On the edge of our seats. And then Samuel Bottomley's character did and then you just... Held, held him, him without holding him so beautifully just and it's what we need so much more in the world you never it. see any positive masculine kind of interaction like that and of course writ large subtle. you've got the incredible subtleties and the contradictions of how Samuel Bottomley's character feels about you know Danny the boy who they've sent off to a essentially kind of like a care home type place or a you know a sort of what would, what would you call it was it sort of a, an institute halfway house halfway Hostel. house or something Hostel. I mean what I liked as well was that it, clearly this has a commentary on the paucity of social services and now there's a lack of care or concern or but it's attention not, it's or not time. A main theme no, no, no. But what was all. clever about it was it was a really incidental there. detail in the way that it is it. for all of us. We exactly. just, it's just there. Exactly. Um, um, Lewis, Lewis Gribben. Oh, come on. I mean, what the hell? Where has this boy come from? He is. You've got two BAFTA newcomers of the year here. They, and they we need have to be two nominated. superstars: Lewis yeah. Gribben and Samuel Bottomley. Uh, in fact, all the cast for me were yeah. extraordinary. Well, on that, but their relationship, Samuel and Lewis. Uh, the arc. Oh my God, the arc that you gave us emotionally and director. Who's the director? Mm, that, that mm. I, I don't know how you got this from these boys or how these boys, or but even that, if these boys fully know what they gave us because yeah, it was so yeah, yeah. But there was the wonderful moment where the Samuel Bottomley character gets, um, Aaron gets that attention from the farmer's daughter. She was fabulous, small she part. Was so she was good. so good. And the farmer was brilliant. The farmer who, you know, spoiler alert, who, uh, you know, essentially was the one responsible for hitting Danny's mum. You know, Danny, also Danny's realisation that there aren't monsters. Danny's desire for revenge and how that no. dissipated. I like the way in which, as a narrative, the story didn't deliver on what we thought. I thought this was going to go gruesome. I thought we were going to go to an inevitable place of revenge Where he and everything. killed everybody, so yeah, did I. exactly. But also the fact that he showed us that there are monsters everywhere. Exactly. exactly. There are monsters yeah. and everywhere we look. And let's just take a moment for the character play, his father, played by Rory Keenan, who... I thought very cleverly, and it was very difficult, because of course his behaviour and his treatment of his son Danny is clearly wrong in, on every conceivable level. But he and allowed us he... to have the empathy as a parent where you go, well, you got so it, but... fucking scared that you wouldn't let him go, and, and then really... you didn't know how to let him go. I understood that. He yeah, and it that. really appealed to me. I thought, it was, I thought his character and everything that was going on there was about grief. The trauma of grief, the sadness of grief, the protection of the family. The failing in the, services yeah, again because they would have known that he had a mental health Exactly, but illness. his desire to protect goes from a very well-meaning desire to protect to something that so damages. so when he's a small boy. He's exactly. Just, and when he breaks his arm and he panics to take him. Oh, then, don't. Don't. But I, I don't feel like I've spoken enough about Lewis Gribben here. Because, no. it, obviously, I've spoken about it because he, his performance... It just grows on you, doesn't mm. it? Don't you mm. think, Mark? Yeah, it, was, like it was almost very subtle. It was so But it was so, so deep. Subtle. It, so deep. I mean, so much of what he it's was pain. doing was he was in a constant... Uh, what he did so well, which is really, really hard to unpack almost, we saw him processing the world Yes. Around him for That's the first very time. Play. That's and very every time, you know, you, I often hear that, you know, obviously you're an actor and the craft of acting in theatre is you, you're, you're acting in a way that this is always the first, you've got to make it feel like it's the first time this has always happened every night of your life, which is like, how the fuck do they do that? But this, every single shot, every single thing he looked at, when he looked to the left, when he looked out of the window, when he looked at someone, when he was processing the social actions, when they were at the karaoke and he was trying to understand, what do you do? You sing songs at it? Mm. it it made because us he, see the world yeah. again. Through, uh, you showed us the world again. The the scene where you suddenly look at the stars ah. and you're not prepared to close your eyes to be oh, shot. Oh, God. Oh, my God. You had me in tears. Yeah. And and you... I suppose people that don't act don't, wouldn't know the difference. And it was... It was, um, it was... Who was it? What actor was it that said to you, John... John Hurt. John Hurt that said to you, people think actors lie, but what they have to do is tell the truth. Mm. You have to inhabit who you are. And Lewis Gribben inhabited, mm. he must have gone through some really tough stuff as an actor mm. to have inhabited the soul of this poor boy and what had happened to him. I honestly, I wept all th on and off throughout this series because they, all these actors took us to some very sad places. And everything they? about this goes back to a phrase that I've used before. All of these characters in this world, 
all of them, including the dead mother, including the father, including the woman that the father brings back for a dance. Very tender scene between the woman that the father brings home after a night out drinking. And she dances with Danny. There's Danny that incredibly loosed, sweet scene. Danny's face when there's yeah. a person there's in a the person house. There's a person in the house. Is she going to stay? It talks about she loneliness again. But yeah, again, it goes to that phrase, mm. everyone was looking for connection. connection. Only connect. Quite all That's the all stuff. we want. All they wanted. All that we are worth when we die is who we loved mm. and how we were loved. I thought it was an absolutely sensational funny, piece actually, of television both making. Both of our favourite sort of philosophies are actually the same. The same. Yeah, Yours yeah. is Only Connect, taken from E.M. Forster's yeah. um, novel, Howard, yeah. Howard's End. I always want to say Howard's Way, but that was about I think I'd say Howard's Knob. And, and mine is not, not from nothing is highfalutin it's just that I've always just thought when I die all, all that matters to me is who I've loved yeah. and how I've been loved back and yeah. I think this series is that in spades oh it makes me emotional the moment the if a moment, TV series can yeah. get me like this and you don't watch it there's something bloody wrong yeah. with you and the moment Lewis Gribbon <laughs> and Samuel Bottomley the two actors hug I'm a bit <laughs> Absolutely. La la la. Sensational filmmaking, programme making. Brilliant directing. It deserves every lighting, award on the planet. production, every shot award. Shot beautifully. Needs every it. single shot, every compositionally, award. off centre, consistent. The consistency. You guys, look at that shot. Look yeah. at that. All and the way the, through. Yeah, just, the one outside the back of the pub. Yeah, it was loved. a marvellous, marvellous top draw lesson in a consistently consistent director of photography slash director's vision for how this should look because everything married across the show. Everything married. It was just and absolutely can astonishing. Can we say? To cast and crew and everyone. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For more film and family fun, don't forget to click the subscribe button and make sure to click the bell to never miss an update.